Hi there. Welcome to the Biz Communication Show. I'm your host, Bill Lampton, the Biz Communication Guy, bringing you communication tips and strategies that will boost your business because my distinguished guest will share winning words and ways with us. Join me today as we welcome, coming to us from the Tampa, Florida area, Greg Cummings. Greg started learning about leadership and communication and teamwork as a scholarship college basketball player. After college, he joined Enterprise Rent-A-Car in the greater Boston area, where his hard work, dedication, and eagerness to learn propelled him up the ranks. Hey, that's a pretty good combination. Greg then gained valuable experience in the finance world before transitioning to the global branding and marketing industry. His entrepreneurial spirit eventually led him to partner in a window and door company where he achieved tremendous success. In this industry, in this leadership role, Greg envisioned forming Power 100, a platform designed to spotlight leaders in the window and door industry who go above and beyond to provide exceptional service and care for their clients. We're fortunate to have Greg with us to talk about how exceptional leaders communicate their way to the top. So join me, please, in welcoming Greg Cummings. Hello, Greg. How you doing, Bill? Thanks so much for having me. Uh, I, appreciate, I appreciate the intro. Uh, yes, well, you um, you had much more uh, background that we'll talk about during our conversation here. I, I want to start with your early introduction to being a member of a team and learning about leadership and communication. You were a scholarship basketball player at St. Anselm College in New Hampshire. I never played a team sport. I, I was on my college golf team, and that's strictly an individual sport. So I, I didn't get the benefits that you got with a, a, a real interactive with a group team sport. What lessons in communication did you learn as a college basketball player that you got over? early on and still are valuable to you? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And I kind of learned it's, it's a twofold answer for me. So there's what I learned in the moment was hard work and follow the lead. Um, but then, you know, once you kind of get past being able to work hard and make, you know, the team better, the big thing that I learned years down the road was that I think maybe you had an advantage where you played an individual sport where it was about you uh, because you're taught at a very, very, very young age in team sports that it's not about you. It's about the team, whatever's best for the team, whatever's best for the team. But especially as I've, you know, as I've matured and come through life and had, I've had kids of my own, um, you start to realize as a leader and as a parent that if you don't take care of, not necessarily yourself at the top, but if you don't provide the right foundations for you to be successful, um, then everybody else won't be successful. (laughs) The only way my kids are going to have a good foundation, my employees, my clients are going to have a good foundation is if I have created an outstanding foundation for myself. So I think that the most important thing in sports, especially as an adolescent or in college is those that the, uh, the commitment, to sports and to the team and to your friends and and your school and how you handle yourself, it channels you and forces you to make better decisions, I believe. Um, but it also doesn't teach you that once you're outside of those walls, you really need to um, be selfish with your learning in order to give to everybody else. I like that. And and in fact, you remind me of something that has come more to the forefront in recent months, maybe in the past two to three years. And that is that before a leader 
can take care of everybody else. The leader has to take care of himself or herself. I, I think, for example, of Arianna Huffington, well known internationally, the founder of the Huffington Post. And one thing Arianna Huffington has been saying in recent years is too many people who want to become outstanding leaders burn themselves out because they go with that old theory, which is keep your nose to the grindstone, uh, burn the midnight oil, uh, work harder and longer than anybody else. And Arianna Huffington said, as productive as she is, she discovered several years ago, the, the best way to be at your maximum is to take efficiency and productivity is to take care of yourself. And so she advocates eight to eight and a half hours sleep a night. And as when you get this, you have more balanced emotions, you have more energy, you have more stamina. Uh, have you had any experiences along those lines of maybe starting out having to do the 24 hour seven stuff and then finding out that didn't work. Yeah, for sure. Um, 100%. That is, that is very real. And so, especially at power 100 where one of our key factors is innovation. Um, a leader cannot innovate if their nose is down and they're working, like you said, 24 seven, or even if they're just working 10 hours a day, it doesn't leave time to truly innovate the process. And I have lived by a philosophy and I've taught and all my employees and, and people I've mentored along the way is if you're not moving forward, you're going backwards because life is on a treadmill. And if you're not running faster than that treadmill, you're never, ever going to gain, you're never going to gain any anywhere. And in fact, this moment you rest, you're on your head. So a great leader has to make the time to get the sleep, to get the nutrition, to exercise, to have a clear head, to network with other people, to observe what is on the horizon from an industrial, you know, from an industry perspective, as well as from an economic perspective. You know, do you roll something out and put a big dollar, you know, big, put a big dollar amount out, you know, at the beginning of an election year might not be the best, but if you think this is the now and then, and you're desperate, you might, you might fall on your own sword, as they say, right? So, a great leader always has control of where their footing is and their eyes are always looking downfield. Um, but yet they also know um, everything that's going on in their business, whether it's them personally or they have a team reporting to them. Um, and that's how, that's how the leaders have to operate. And when I look at the thousands of leaders that, that we manage in our database, every single one of them in the, in the top 100 have those core values of innovation and their eyes are downfield. Now they're they're working their butts off. Don't get me wrong, but they have to innovate. Speaking of innovation, tell us about how you got honored by Forbes magazine as an innovator. Well, it was it, it got brought up because I don't want to say that we're disrupting the industry, but we are we are taking um, the pay to play model completely out. Um, this is Power 100 is not a pay to play. We have created a 100% non biased um, five layer proprietary ranking system through algorithms and AI. And what that does is we put out this list every single year and it comes out in July. And so when we kind of break that mold of, there's a lot of people that probably aren't happy where they're saying, okay, we want the pay to play rankings or the pay to play ads or the recommendations or the you know ratings, whatever it is, I don't care about all that. The only thing that I care about is providing a service that I wanted when I was in the day-to-day -day window and doors. And what that was is I wanted to get into a knockdown, drag out fight with my competition who I wanted to compete against, right? Um, I wanted to compete against other people that were gonna put in the right product, that were gonna not skip and install the right way, that were gonna have a lifetime warranty. All of these things that are important that provide a lot of value to the client. Um, I want, I was okay to compete with them. I was not okay competing with people, you know, a guy in a truck or somebody that put in an inferior product that told the customer it was a great product, you know, or whatever. It, the, there's a hundred different scenarios. Right. Um, 
And I think the construction industry as a whole has got a bad rap because of the 80% of the people that are, that are taking advantage of the, the latter of what I was just talking about. But the reality is when you operate and when you, when you host the top 20%, the top 10, the top 5%, the top 1% of this, um, especially within the window and door space, you're getting the best customer service and the best warranty out of anything that you could possibly buy or, or own. One of the things that, that I've determined over 20 years in management myself and then the next 20 as a management and, and C-level ex, uh, executive consultant is that providing value, as you just mentioned, if providing value is your main driving force, then you deserve to be in that top 100 or top 10 or whatever. And one of the things about the industry that we're talking about, the window and door industry, the average consumer like me really knows nothing about the product. I would, I, and I, I can say that I think unequivocally. I don't think. Yeah, many, for sure. Many you, of my neighbors. Make, let's, let's face it. You, you replace your windows once, maybe twice in your lifetime. And yes. That's if you have multiple homes. So <laughs> that there's no experienced buyer out there. And so how do we know what's good product? How do we know what's good service if we only do that every 20 or 25 years? That's why someone who's unethical or only profit driven in the industry yeah. can get by, but they're they're not they'll never be in the power 100. Greg, I, I need to share with you, uh, getting back to college athletics and, and what we learned from that as a lifetime experience. Um, I would imagine you're familiar as our viewers and listeners are with Fran Tarkenton. Fran Tarkenton was an outstanding quarterback at University of Georgia. I live in Georgia, so I know the, the Georgia story quite well. He played 18 seasons of professional football. Then over the last uh, 30 or 40 years, he's also been a highly successful business guy. He's on LinkedIn where you and I got to know each other. Yeah. On LinkedIn recently, he posted a short video which talked about his freshman year at University of Georgia. He said, in this little video, which I encourage everybody to go watch, in this short video, he said, when I went to Georgia, I, was, I didn't go there to sit on the bench. I went there to play, and I didn't want to wait. So midway through his freshman year, uh, the coach had told him, you're redshirted, and that was, that was the category where he couldn't play. It winds up that they, they're going to... Um, Austin, Texas, to play University of Texas. The game is dragging on. Georgia is getting nowhere. Fran is sitting on the bench as usual. <laughs> and then Texas punts and Georgia gets the ball on the five-yard line, their own five-yard line. And Fran Tarkenton, without looking at the coach, instead of the quarterback, regular quarterback, Charlie Britt going in, Fran Tarkenton <laughs> runs in. And when it gets to the huddle, the guys look at him and say, you can't be here. You're red shirted. And he said, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and the lesson from that, uh, Fran Tarkenton pointed out, is don't let anybody else tell you what your limitations are or don't any, let anybody else what tell you what you can or cannot do. And you and I both, uh, having been either participants or longtime fans of college athletics, have come across many stories that are applicable to business. We will be back in just a few seconds. I want to talk with you more about the Power 100. Do you wish you felt confident about giving speeches? Do you want to deal with difficult people constructively? And what about becoming more persuasive in sales? Then keep listening now to Dr. Bill Lampton. He spent 20 years in management, so he knows the communication skills you need for success. 
I urge you to call the Biz Communication Guy today for a no-cost but very valuable 30-minute discussion about your communication challenges. Call now, 678-316-4300. Again, that's 678-316-4300. I commend you, Greg, for uh, creating something that recognizes excellence. You know, ever since we were kids, we we wanted and and we cherished and we still keep awards. I've got I've got a plaque that I was given as probably a 12 year old at a summer camp. (laughs) I mean, uh, recognition encourages us. Recognition spurs us on. So let's talk some more about the Power 100. You mentioned a, uh, a five-layer ranking system. Is that something you can put in plain English for us to understand? I don't know about plain English, but I can try. Okay. Uh, so the five-layer proprietary ranking system um, has five layers. How about that? Uh, the first three layers are essentially public information uh, combined with um, a, an internal algorithm that is designed to start everybody off with a level playing field and then filter down um, to the results that you see. And then the bottom two layers have to do with verification of those findings. So it's very, very important to not only have the algorithm, so what it does is it combines both that AI algorithm as well as that human touch interaction to where we're able to verify, you know, and if you're looking at it from a consumer's standpoint, they have said something, a, a, a company has said that they're good. They have experience. They have clients that say that they're good, reviews that support it, better business bureau complaints. They've handled issues. Um, but then we have actually put our Power 100 eyes on it and hands on it to verify that everything that we've seen is correct and is legit. Um, it's a it's an element that is missing from every single ranking system that's out there on the internet. So do, do uh, leaders apply for this or no, do you, no. no they don't, you no. identify them. They have no idea that they're on the list. That's what makes it a true unbiased platform. They, we have our list that is, we have 7,600 window door CEOs in our database. Um, and that's of all shapes and sizes. And then pretty much our algorithm basically cuts that down to a third very, very quickly before we're able to then filter through the, um, the top. Uh, but at the end of the day, the CEOs and the companies have no say where they are on it whatsoever. That is what makes it genuine. Um, so it's pretty powerful. I noticed the recognition that you give the Power 100 on the website, which you can mention at the end of our conversation. Uh, I'm I'm wondering, do you ever have any gathering of these people? Do you bring them together anywhere? (laughs) It's a great question. So we just formed our first power group. Um, The power groups are going to be with like-minded individuals. That is a combination of experience and, um, I guess, youth. And so then people are going to be able to share what works, what doesn't work. And they're going to be able to operate that under a non-disclosure and also like I said, non-competing markets. So there's going to be some tremendous value to the network once they're on and in the uh, top 100 list that they're going to be able to use. And the whole premise is to give the good guys the tools and the platform to get better every single day. Um, That's what's most important. So yes, Power Groups is coming. Um, We're also filming Power Podcasts right now called Power Chats. Power Chats are going to roll out in the summer and it's going to be a way that the that communities can actually see and meet the CEO and the leader of these companies, which I believe is the most important thing. If a CEO is willing to stand up, raise their hand, say, this is my company, I stand behind it, then they're willing to do that for their clients every single time, right? Um, if a CEO just sits in his desk and back office and you never see him, that's not necessarily the innovative leader that you want in the window and door space. Now, they can't get to everybody, Right. So that's what I'm here for, is to give them that stage to where they can get to everybody. You mentioned the, the CEO sitting in the back office. I, I spent 20 years in management and I saw some of the best practices, but I also 
saw some of the worst. And one of them I remember was a CEO in the organization I worked for who had a, it was almost a secret entrance to the building. <laughs> yeah. Was. I've seen that. I've seen that multiple times. <laughs> yes. Yes. Where they, they, you know, they, they want to go to that, uh, that C-suite and, and be invisible. And another part of that, and I know you've seen this as well, is where the CEO and we used to call them the suits, but nobody wears suits anymore. Right. Uh, but the, the top leaders will go to the company cafeteria for lunch and, and they all sit together. Yeah, they, they're, they're isolated. Yeah. I spent um, some time professionally in philanthropy. I noticed that the charitable involvement of CEOs is one of the criteria that you use in deciding who's going to be in the power 100. How was it you came to that decision, Greg? What, what makes it so important in evaluating leadership? It's pretty simple. It's not what anybody thinks and it's not what anybody wants to hear. Now it's, there is twofold. Charity is phenomenal and it does great things. And giving back is one of the most important things to me and my family. Um, however, the reason it's such a influential piece on the top 100 is because if a company has time and financial resources to go out and do these things, then that means they're well managed. It's a checks and balances system. It's a little wink. It's a, it's a cheat, right? Like if a company is doing a bunch of, they're able to have a film crew go out and they're able to um, build a house or put windows in or, or have their employees work a food drive on a Saturday that tells me that the employees are bought in. The culture is strong. It tells me that they have the, the financial resources, which means their business is strong. And it tells me that they have a good heart because they're spending their time wisely. And those are the three, those are three main, main points in a, in a fantastic leader. Now, if that leader is actually at that food um, pantry, or if they're actually on site with a hammer and nail or whatever the case may be, then that even exemplifies it even more. But a lot of times these companies are big, they have multiple locations, they're regionally strong, they're not always going to be there. And so they're able to facilitate that. That is just truly impactful. And it's one of the, it's one of the larger uh, points of emphasis on Power 100. Thank you for bringing that up. It certainly makes an impact when a company is not just for profit alone, but they, they become involved in the community. Many of yeah. the, the leaders that I've had the opportunity to either work for or then later work with as a consultant, many of them have a calendar that's that's pretty well filled with participation in, in nonprofit organizations and not only participation, but generosity as well. And that's that, of course, um, I, I go back to a name that many people might not know, but they've seen that name on libraries and institutions across the, the United States and even the world, and that's Andrew Carnegie. Andrew Carnegie came to this country from Scotland, and he, he as I remember, I've read his autobiography, and as I remember, he retired at age 35 after being a a true megastar in the development of the steel industry. And he retired at 35 so that he could, he could uh, devote his time to philanthropy. And, and his name is on so many organizations as a result. Yeah. Isn't that powerful? Powerful. That's, that's a great legacy, isn't it? It is. Greg, it's been fascinating to host you. And I want to ask you, would there be any two things? First of all, any closing comments on your part that sort of pull this all together about the Power 100 and your shining a light on the people who are doing things right? Any closing comment and also your contact information? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, first of all, thank you very much for having me. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't thank every one of my CEOs that are on the list that are doing the right thing every single day uh, by their clients and putting this industry 
a shining star on it, if you will. Um, and as far as the top five for this last year's list, it's James Freeman at number one, um, fantastic leader, uh, followed by Adam Blank, and then Brian Brooks, John DePola, Jun- um, senior and junior, um, and uh, Joe Stackhouse. So that kind of rounds out the top five. Our premise is to give these um, these great leaders a true um, platform to be seen and heard on. So I want to follow through and mention them by name. This way they're able to, they're able to get a little something out of everything that we do, but everyone else has done an amazing job as well. And uh, really look forward to next year's list. It comes out, our list comes out every July. So we're getting ready to launch a new list and it's very important that, you know, we film as many podcasts as we can, as we roll out this new year's campaign. And uh, we're able to really show everybody and introduce all these CEOs to their audience um, and eliminate the middleman. So the message is able to come straight from the leader, straight to the consumer. Um, And that's a very powerful thing to do. And that's what we're at. We're very, very much looking forward to it. Anybody can check out our um, power rankings, honorable mention and awards um, and recognition and charitable work um, on we're on LinkedIn is a very powerful updated um, platform as well as our website is power100.io that's power100.io so um, and then you could always reach out to us Um, you can fill out a form online and reach out to us on on our website we'll be happy to have a conversation and if you want to be a guest on our podcast um, please do that as well or just reach out to to me directly on linkedin greg you have demonstrated the communication skills that i teach executives hoping that they will get them well, I didn't even know I was doing it, so I appreciate it. <laughs> and now that uh, you've given your contact information, I'm happy to give mine my YouTube channel. I invite you to go to my YouTube channel and in the search area, type in my YouTube moniker, which is Bill Lampton, PhD. And while you're there, be sure to hit the subscribe button. I checked the other day, I have 440 communication instruction videos there. And over the last few years, many of them are are comprised of the Biz Communication Show, where I've had the privilege of hosting leaders like Greg Cummings. And then certainly go to my website, since I'm the Biz Communication Guy. Logically, the website is biz, B-I-Z, bizcommunicationguy.com. Certainly, I invite you to give me a phone call. No obligation for an initial discussion about your communication challenges and problems and how I can assist you with them. That number is 678-316-4300. I want to thank Greg Cummings again for being with us today. Thank you for those of you who joined us. And we invite you to be with us again for the next edition of the Biz Communication Show, when again, we will bring tips and strategies that boost your business and you will have winning words and ways.